What's up everybody, this is Simon and you're watching Cryptechology. So it's been a while since I've posted a video. I've been working on so many different things, um, preparing for the IoT network of the future that we're building. We're collaborating with so many people and I've met so many amazing and intelligent people. Uh, and we're all focused on the same mission. We're all focused on the IoT mission. We're all focused on providing quality coverage for preventative data solutions for data sensor data that's what this is about this is about providing the infrastructure in place so people can obtain value from sensors sensors like this a GPS tracker sensor that could you know be put in your child's book bag or something like that or it can be put um, around the neck if you are a construction worker that works in a in a dangerous area or or um you know on top of the beams or something like that or anything you know inside sewers that um essentially you can use this to contact the uh what is it the, the foreman or something like that the, on the job and let them know hey i need help all right you know this is a temperature and humidity sensor this will let you know, you know, the quality of air around you, how it's not the quality essentially, but the temperature and humidity and give you that data. Um, and then, you know, you can use that information if for, say, for example, you are growing any indoor type of plants and you need to uh, keep track of the temperature and humidity inside of the tent or inside of the grow room or anything like that this will give you that information but normally you would probably have a device yeah that in, that's in there but you would actually have to go walk there and go to that device and see what that information well with something like this we can actually gather that information uh right from your fingertips right from your any uh, uh browser or that connects to the internet another sensor that will be valuable are, are the window and door sensors and basically whenever this detaches okay that's when you'll be notified and this could be good you can place these on a window the door you can even you don't even have to use this essentially for security you can even use this from a marketing standpoint right so say you want to know um you know how often you know your 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 customers are coming in inside uh, of a of a of a building, all right. Or even if you're a mall owner and you want to know how many people are coming in the into the mall, which door has the most activity, okay? And then essentially, what you can do with that information, you can use that information for for any type of marketing campaigns. Well, hey, we know the northwest side of the mall entry gets the most um gets the most traffic between the hours of 9 and 11 we would totally recommend any new um kia or or, or, or where are they call those things the kiosk people uh, the, you know the people that's in the in the center you know what I mean with with the um that that's trying to sell their their product and they rent space or whatever you know any 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 new ones to the mall we recommend you know maybe placing some type of advertisement or placing something there you know you can actually you know you can provide this data to your um to the to your mall uh, um, uh, uh, tenants and you know another thing that you can use you know you can use air quality sensors to track the the air in in the house or in the school especially with the pandemic and everything's been going down we want to make sure that the quality of air in any building or facility is up to par and not even just up to par it's i mean it's above average it's you having great circulation but how would you know that okay well this is how you can do that. You can use an air quality sensor. But 
there are people already working on this and let me share with you exactly what I'm talking about oh sorry this is from uh, wait hold on let me see um, I just set up my Solana dev environment so let me make sure oopsies wrong code Solana the V yep there we go we are totally set up um here if you don't know what I'm looking at but this is Solana um, I set that my dev environment up we have the Solana CLI 1.7.10 blockchain um, on here so stay tuned for those videos we'll be uh, developing on the Solana blockchain and uh, yeah so that's gonna be really fun alright but let's get that out of the way because that's not what this video is about okay so this video is about whoopsies what happened to my face? There we go. All right. So this this is about the quality of air inside of um, I believe it was schools, public transportation buildings, office buildings, and so forth. So McKenna provided a great article for us to um share with everybody and uh, I'm here to give uh, kind of there uh, give her her props and rep for the amazing write-up and um, sorry to be following her already am I not logged in no I am not logged in for whatever reason okay all right, so let's get this set up and connected. Um, that was not actually the right line, <laughs> but that's okay. Who cares? Okay, so let's, let's give her a nice little round of applause there, and uh, maybe we'll provide some comments too. Let's just do that right now. Actually, no, because it's not the right login that I want to use, but that's okay. We'll do that another time off screen you guys don't need to watch me do that so let's get ready and go through this article if anybody's new here my name is Simon I'm your helium G I'm your helium subject matter expert I've been working on the helium 25 growth plan we are creating coverage and turning towns into smart cities I focus on the East Coast preferably around New Jersey Maryland Delaware parts of Pennsylvania, DC, and Virginia locations. We are actually allowing um, people to host our hotspots and at the same time um, sometimes you'll even get a free sensor so you can participate as a network user. You know, getting a hotspot that is just the beginning of the IoT journey. That is just the uh, the beginning of the movement of the mission I mean the hotspot is what allows you to participate as a you know as a an infrastructure builder but not but also um, you and everyone else around your area that you're providing coverage for um, it can now become a network user and that's that's the value you know everyone loves to look at the price action and the chart and there's nothing wrong with that I'm a trader I totally get that and there's value in that as well but but that is not the only value you know Bitcoin is a is a store of value it's a digital property I recommend everybody getting their Bitcoin and and, and diamond hands in it alright because that allows you to to own your piece of of the blockchain, own your piece of, of cryptocurrency, and with Bitcoin being the genesis, Bitcoin being the OG, Bitcoin being the center point essentially for cryptocurrency. Um, there's nothing wrong with BTC, not financial advice. Do your own DD. However, as you can see in the background right there, we got the Bitcoin. Let me, uh, 
we got the Bitcoin, okay, the Bitcoin graffiti uh, sweatshirt, and we got Bitcoin on the moon, baby, on the moon. All right, so so trust me when I'm when I'm talking about crypto, I'm talking about collaboration. Okay, that's what. Uh, blockchain's about that's why blockchain can be successful is because of collaboration not because of capitalistic uh fiat uh competition i step on you to level up type of attitude and strategy no if you're gonna you know if you're coming to blockchain with that type of mindset you can keep it moving um i can't speak for everybody else in the community but i hope other people and I like to call us the people of the chain. I hope that we, you know, can all at least come to the consensus that, look, this is about collaboration. If we don't collaborate, we won't grow. And the whole conversation of and debate between centralized and decentralized, you know, centralized decentralization does not mean the removal of leadership. Okay, decentralization is actually the uh, uh, um, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? The the increase in leadership. There's more leadership. There's more opportunity. Okay, blockchain technology lowers the entry, the barrier of entry, so everyday folks can get involved and and actually be part of something that could change their financial trajectory and can change their future okay um, a lot of us are stuck in the rat race a lot of us are just you know being complacent and if we want to venture into anything different or any other career there's so many obstacles uh, from that fiat current system there's so many obstacles in the way that it sometimes deters people from moving forward and from moving up um, and that you end up staying at the same place for a long time but you know as we all are aware of inflation and the dollar bill now you know less being worth less today than it was yesterday than it was last year okay they keep printing money and I believe they just printed another like 30 or 40 percent and every time they do that your dollar bill is worth less okay so yeah you may have more of it and yeah it may look cool that you have a higher number of dollar bills but when you go to the store and you actually try to purchase something and that item has now increased by 20 or 30 percent where what what does it matter how many you have okay it evens out anyway at the end of the day essentially it you're losing you can there is no you can no longer save your way to wealth you can't save your way to financial freedom you have to put your money to work you have to think of your dollar bills as your little soldiers your little employees okay as your team essentially when your your soldiers are or your dollar bills are under the mattress, you know, or inside of a bank that is giving you 50 cents every year and saying, you know, while they use your money to trade and invest the in markets, making 20, 10, 20, uh, 30 percent eat a day on, on all your money, you know, and then they give you point point zero one percent or point zero three percent. Like, seriously, what are you going to do with that? What are you gonna do with that? All right, and you know, and and it's and the the messed part about it, you know, for the people that struggle the most, they get hit the hardest. If you don't keep a certain balance inside your account, you get hit with maintenance fees. All right, why do they hit you with maintenance fees? You know why? Because then they know that your account's not reliable to them to take money from, so they can use probably. Who knows? Okay. But either way is they are doing things with your money that you can do with your money yourself. And blockchain and cryptocurrency is 
part of that. And that's what DeFi is about, decentralized finance. That's what it's about. You can put your money to work in so many different ways. Just by, and even just by storing your money in certain different projects on, and get paid in interest. Um, you know, and I'm talking about decent interest where, you know, five, six, seven, eight percent. Um, you know, there, there are there are so many opportunities right now within DeFi. And um, I definitely would recommend people to at least go check it out and start learning about it. Um, so back to helium. Sorry, I went on a little rant there. So back to helium. Helium is different from Ethereum. Helium is different from uh, uh, Bitcoin. Helium is different from any other altcoin. Okay. For one thing, we are not an altcoin derived from Ethereum. All right. We're not an EVM type coin. All right. We are our own blockchain, but that doesn't mean we do not collaborate with other blockchains. All right. Because there are people like, for example, I'm focused and learning on um, learning uh, the Solana blockchain so I can, you know, work, uh, create a few applications, um, or dApps rather, decentralized application for Solana utilizing uh, the information from Helium. Um, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. Um, I, you know, I, I'd say stay tuned a lot because I am a one-man team, but at the same time, um, I challenge myself. Um, it may sometimes I can do things quickly. Sometimes it may take a while, but I promise you I will get it done, and I will get there, and I will make it to the end um, and accomplish my goal. Um, so, you know, the one thing about the internet and videos is that, you know, I try to project uh, organic and realistic um, journey in my videos. You know. And um, I'm just sharing with you guys my journey and and um, how it's helping me to level up how I focus on enhancing your future self because I want to enhance my future self. I want to enhance the, my, my children's future self. OK, and when I say that, I mean, it. all right, that's what this is about. This is the POC lines. OK, this design right here. That's the POC lines from from our hotspot. This is the network. This is collaboration. This design right here, that's what it represents. And when we put it together and we collaborate, we create a diamond. And that diamond represents the diamond hands, the diamond hand community, the ones that are here because we believe in what we're doing. We believe in the value that we're creating. And when it comes to helium, we've grown so much in just a short period of time. And that community needs their rep. They need they need their props. And I may not be anyone big, but I'm here to at least give you the props. Everybody that's here in helium, everyone that's bought a hotspot, everyone that's in, in the Discord, everyone that is learning about sensor development, everyone that's helping to create console, everyone that's working on mapping the network, everyone that's actually deploying hotspot correctly and not trying to gamify the network. Because if you are gaming a network, I'm sorry, no, this rep doesn't go to you. All right, so to everyone, thank you. Thank you. We are paying attention, people are paying attention and as we continue to be the example for the rest of our community, more and more people will come and join our community. More and more people will come and help support our mission. You see, our ability to create a network infrastructure as a community is groundbreaking. And some people don't understand the value of community or collaboration. And they think that it needs to be, you know, this self-sustaining thing uh, by the blockchain. But no, we are the people. We, all of us, we are the energy 
that keeps any project alive. Nothing is ever self-sustaining. Okay? Don't think about trying to create self-sustainment. All right, because we want interaction with our technology. We want interaction with the blockchain. We want interaction with what we're doing. And with Helium, we are providing value both within the digital realm and the physical realm. The physical realm is IoT and sensor data. And having a sensor in place to protect a child that may be lost and their parents can't find them. To help an elderly person and their family find them when they go walking around or maybe go missing and there's like silver alerts. To have a temperature sensor in, in, in the field somewhere to let you know, hey, something is up. Let's get ahead of this before this fire burns acres and acres and acres, hundreds of acres of land and destroys people's homes. Hey, let's put a water leak sensor inside these boats that you store. So when you come back from the off season, you know, you're not coming to a situation where you had a leak and now things are rusted and things are messed up and now you got to spend a lot of money to get those repairs. Where you could have been informed right when that water um, initially showed itself you would be able to check that out with sensor data. Having information ahead of time is what allows us to create preventative data solutions, preventative strategies to future vulnerabilities and issues. There's nothing wrong with way, the way we are right now, but there is something wrong with being complacent. And we are complacent as a human race because we wait for things to happen before we think of strategies before we think about trying to fix them and we can see that with climate change we can see that with global warming we can see that with so many different areas in this world where we wait for things to happen before we decide to make action but normally when that happens the problem is so vast that it costs even more money and it uses expends more energy just to get things done but when we have sensors in place to give us data ahead of time we can combat all of those vulnerabilities all right with a smaller amount of investment a smaller amount or, or, or I'm sorry not investment a smaller amount of resources and a smaller maybe it's potentially even smaller team and a lower level of energy okay so we're not feeling like we're rushed because if we don't do something now something dangerous is something bad's gonna happen that's not a good place of mind to be when you're trying to create a positive solution to any challenge obstacle or, or issue sensor data may not be everywhere right now and the reason that it, it's like that is because there is no network infrastructure in place to support the sensors but the sensors are available the hardware is available the equipment's available and people are using data every single day and they might be writing it down in a notebook or they might be just manually inputting it into their computer system. But you better believe businesses, schools, uh, uh, um, agriculture, anywhere, it doesn't matter. They're utilizing uh, data. Now, it's our job to improve upon that uh, that strategy and how people use data and how people uh, uh, analyze data and how people gather data and we're trying to give you the ability to focus more on the analysis of the data rather than the amount of time it takes to gather the data 
if we can help you gather data faster so you can be more focused on the analysis the strategy and actually implement it, implementing that data to useful uh, solutions well then that's a success in my book helium blockchain is more than just another cryptocurrency the helium blockchain is about merging the past the present and the future the past being radio frequency the present being wireless network and the future being blockchain technology with all of this here it is given us the missing link to the IOT mission <clears throat> we can now incentivize and tokenize any behavior or interaction in the world with blockchain technology and helium is that example of how if you build it they will come if you incentivize people will help I mean let's be real we can't move forward without the funds we can't advance without the technology and we can't enhance your future self without preventative data solutions helium is giving you all of that and Erica, I think I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Erica and the helium fight COVID-19 and other pathogens with air quality sensors. And that is what they are doing. Introducing Erica, a helium compatible indoor air quality company that provides office buildings, public transports, schools, and restaurants with recommendations regarding room health and space utilization. Delivering up to 1,000 sensors per week and equipped with the ability to integrate with third-party systems like Slack and Outlook. Erica is making actionable, real-time, and science-based insights more accessible than ever before. Picture this. You visit your dentist's office for an appointment. And as you are waiting to be called back, the room begins to fill with additional guests. Conforming to the room's comfortable ambiance, an Erica wall sensor begins giving off a soft light to indicate unhealthy room conditions to the office staff. The staff immediately begins to spread guests out and increase airflow until the oxygen in the room is once again clean and free flowing. I'm sorry, this is really cool because this is literally what I've been talking about um, months ago and uh, in Discord and stuff. And just to see uh, people doing this, this is this is just really fantastic. Um, the industrial grade Erica sensor is scalable easy to install and allows for seamless integration into existing infrastructures through the Erica API. The Erica dashboard takes it a step further by aggregating detailed metrics over time. This feature allows facility managers to optimize room usage, identify ventilation issues, and save costs. Okay? Save costs a business to business solution let's talk about that how can this help you improve your bottom line or to just to improve your business good air quality reduces the transmission of pathogens a particular relevant fact given the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic it also comes as no surprise that cognitive performance is directly linked to indoor air quality and that employee productivity can significantly be improved by ensuring proper ventilation. Employee productivity can significantly be improved by ensuring proper ventilation. Erica was founded to increase global health by turning every room into a healthy, safe, and productive space. With this in mind, 
Erica enables businesses to optimize indoor environments by providing actionable insights that lead to, well, enhanced employee health, well-being, and productivity, cost savings through improved room utilization and demand-controlled ventilation, increased trust for a safe return to the office in the context of COVID-19, compliance with advanced green building standards such as LEED, individualized awareness of indoor air quality and its effect on disease transmission, and last, prevention of relative problems such as sick building syndrome, okay? Preventative data solutions. That's what this is about. Breathing easier with helium. So first and foremost, Erica is dedicated to providing an exceptional customer experience that does not involve the technical details of LoRaWAN, all right? So having initially tried other network solutions like the Things Network or the Things Industries, Erica was not fully satisfied. Erica subs subsequently, subsequently <laughs> installed its own gateways at customer sites and managed its own network servers. While this strategy increased flexibility, it also exacerbated overhead costs. It was expensive to keep things like that running, exactly. So that's what this is about, where we get to focus on building the infrastructure so other people can be focused on the sensors, can be focused on the data, can be focused on the solutions. All right, they don't have to worry about the network. Transitioning devices to the people's network allows Erica to focus on its core services and alleviates the need for running its own networking infrastructure, just like I said. Furthermore, Erica clients benefit from the people's network in the following ways. Increased availability and scaling. So what does that mean? Well, their sensors are available in EU, US, and Asia frequencies and can now be globally operated on the people's network. Next, reduced cost. By providing indoor gateways to helium, Erica can earn HT and provide customers with a more economical service. Ease of installation. Erica will not be required to install gateways due to existing hotspots, translating to an easier installation process. And that's what I was talking about before. With them having the ability to focus on sensors and sensor data only, and we get to focus on the network infrastructure. With those two collaborations in place, it allows us to really provide preventative data solutions at its best. And global expansion. Securing sensors and gateways has been a top priority for Erica during the last two years. As the people's network rapidly expands, new Erica clients will receive sensors and LoRaWAN gateway if needed. All of this is made possible thanks to a strategic partnership between Erica and Miramico, a leading supplier for industrial grade transceivers, modules, sensors, and LoRaWAN, LoRaWAN gateways. Miramico is able to produce 10,000 gateways now and over 35 hotspots by 2022. With the supplier's assistance in providing gateways as needed to new customers, Erica plans to expand beyond Switzerland to the European market, the United States, and Asia by 2022. Check out Erica on the uplink with Helium on September 16th at 12 p.m. specific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. So, congratulations to Erica. Thank you for helping us support the People's Network. Thank you for giving us the ability to enhance our future selves with the indoor air quality sensor. I look forward to things that come from this and I can't wait to see more and more people use air quality sensors to enhance their future self. I'm Simon. I hope you like this episode of Cryptechology. 
please hit that like, subscribe, you know, share, do the YouTube thing, help me reach more and more people so we can provide quality helium content and let people know, hey, there is a huge community of network users and there's more than just mining HNT. Alright guys, I'm your Helium G. I'll catch you on the next one.